Travis, how and why do I want to adopt indicators of compromise? So adopting indicators of compromise is going to give you a leg up on your adversary, on your attackers. So it allows you to proactively understand the not only the tools that your attackers are going to be using, but also their tactics and techniques. So you can define not only the signatures that they're going to do, but also how they're going to get into your environment, what they're going to do once they are inside your environment, as well as uh, what they want to do with that data once they've gathered it. So what is the advice of the how I sort of, I guess, first step in sort of understanding indicator of uh, compromise. Yeah, so the first step is under understanding how you can adopt indicator of compromise data. So there's two main workflows you'd want to do. One is for real-time detection. The other one is for forensic searching. All right, let's start. Real-time detection, walk me through it. All right, so real-time detection is what I prefer to use as a log management type tool. So you can use something like an open source tool, like uh, what they call the Elk Stack, which is maintained by Elastico. That's Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. So you can collect data, analyze it, pull out the valuable information, so things like IP addresses, websites, uh, file hashes, and then reference those against your third-party detection. Uh, if something comes back and tells you that it's malicious, then you can take your incident response workflow based off of that data. And then the forensic model. So the forensics one. So it's not enough that you can just detect in real time. So a common mistake with workflows is you collect your data, you update your security tool feeds with that threat intelligence data, and you monitor an observable, and it doesn't match any known indicator of compromised data. Now let's say 10 minutes later, the threat intel feeds light up, and they say that that observable you saw, for example, that IP address that your CEO just browsed to is known uh, a known command and control website. Right, you've already done the real-time detection and you've failed at detecting that threat to your environment. So you want to be able to go back and look historically at that data. So we've released something called TARDIS. It's an open source framework available on GitHub. So it's tripwire slash TARDIS that you can go back, feed in your indicator of compromised data and search your data repositories for those IOCs. So now not only can you detect that in real time, you can also go back and look in history to see if you've ever been compromised historically. In all this research you've been doing on indicators of compromise, what has been the most eye-opening and unexpected surprise? The most unexpected is how timely the data needs to be. So indicator of compromised data, so the data that we're gathering can go stale in minutes to hours. So we have viruses that are polymorphic that are changing themselves. So we have last year in 2015, we saw over 200,000 individual pieces of malware created every single day. We also have pieces of malware that are updating themselves and changing the IP addresses for their command and control server to random addresses, so we don't know where they're going to be talking to. So if we, don't, if we aren't collecting that data and putting it to use in actionable ways very timely, uh, we're going to be completely blank to any of our adversaries.